All right, guys, well, I'm back today with an overview of the Palmetto State Armory Jackal chambered in 300 blackout in the 8.5 inch barrel length configuration. This is a relatively new offering from Palmetto State Armory, and the Jackal lineup has really taken shape and form over the past few months. They've just released their 16 inch series of rifles chambered in 5.56, as well as their 300 blackout 8.5 inch upper assemblies. And I think this is one of the most well thought out 300 blackout setups that you you can get with everything you need to get going to either shoot in its standard configuration or adding a quietening device on the end. It's pretty slick because it offers a ton of nice features including all of the recoil mechanism in the upper assembly rather than in a buffer tube allowing you to make an SBR like this one is right here with a folding stock or you can just leave it off completely and run with the straight pick rail on the back. Now Depending on how things go with everything else hanging off the back of this, there could be other options in the future. Now, what makes this special is the fact that it's reasonably affordable compared to other options on the market and the fact that it's done right and it has Palmetto State Armory's customer service behind it. They are a industry giant and they are producing really good things. Before we get too far into it, I want to give a huge shout out to Calorie Ballistics for sending a ton of 300 blackout over to make this video. I also have the code 704 Tactical for free free shipping on ammo orders over $200. They just did price drops on 9mm and 9mm hollow point at incredibly affordable prices as low as $12 a box of 50. Definitely check them out and don't forget that code 704 tactical. Now this is on an SBR or a registered SBR lower so it works out great for that alpha series of stocks that we discussed in previous videos from Midwest Industry. There's almost a never-ending supply now of folding pick rail stocks for the backs of farms so this makes a nice touch now in a nutshell the jackal comes as a complete pistol or it comes in different configurations kind of like an a la carte mix and match that psa is known for so you can buy the lower assemblies with or without a stock and you can buy the upper assemblies in different configurations mix and match and put them together now again this is a registered sbr lower that was generally using a 556 upper but i've temporarily swapped it out for 300 blackout to make this video so this is a great option too if you wanted to get one registered lower assembly and swap out different upper assemblies they all are interchangeable with no issues whatsoever in fact a lot of this is just a standard AR stripped lower with different components added and you can buy some of those kits to convert a traditional strip lower assembly for an AR that you may already have. All of this information will be on my campsite page, my newly formed Twitter, and my Patreon page and Instagram stories to find the best options possible to save yourself a ton of money. So if you're not following me on those platforms, subscribe to this channel, definitely do so. It will save you in the long run, especially when we're talking about different PSA things. I try to get the jump on a lot of these deals and post them on those platforms. So to begin with, this does come with the eight and a half inch barrel. And it's a pretty heavy profile barrel, which is great if you do run a ton of rounds through it. It's not going to overheat or warp or anything like that. It comes threaded 5 8 by 24 for your traditional 308 and 300 blackout thread pitch. Right attached to the end of the barrel is that adjustable gas block with a few different click options depending on the settings you want. Now, all the way clockwise until it locks into place is going to be your suppressed setting or, or your, your subsonic setting. And that is what really makes this unique. If you've ever tried to shoot subsonic ammo out of a 300 blackout AR, you'll realize that they're incredibly finicky and some ARs won't shoot subsonic ammo. Some will, some will have feeding issues. PSA has really nailed this down. So when you turn it all the way clockwise, it opens up that port to allow it to run subsonic ammo with suppressors. And I didn't try to run it without a suppressor. I did notice though with a really short can, um, with one of my kind of like micro 300 blackout and 308 cans, it quite didn't have enough oomph um, to lock it back after the last shot. When I switched to a slightly longer can, more of an 8-inch can, it locked back after every shot. 
Then if you're running supersonic ammo, you can start dialing it down, including supersonic suppressed. There's a few different gas settings and all that information can be found on their site. But this is pretty cool because this allows you on the fly adjustments in the field to shoot a wide variety of ammunition. And there was not a single ammo this didn't run um, suppressed. So it worked out great. So I tried two different types of subsonic 300 blackout with different bullet profiles and they both fed great. I did run some supersonic brass cased ammo with no issues whatsoever. And then I also ran steel cased wolf supersonic ammo with no issues whatsoever. There was only one issue with subsonic ammo when it came to feeding. And that was when the rifle was located kind of sideways and it didn't have enough oomph to just completely put it into battery. And I believe that was due to the bullet profile, the way the gun was positioned, and the fact that it might just need a little bit more gas with these shorter cans. So that is something to consider at that subsonic level, depending on what suppressor you're running. You may have to play with your load slightly, but that was the only bobble out of about 300 to 350 rounds. Now, again, this is an overview and not a full review because I've only put 300 50 rounds generally i try to like to get more in but uh subsonic 300 blackout is not cheap so i ran through a lot and again a huge shout out to Callaway ballistics for supporting this video but i also wanted to run this with supersonic ammo got a lot of that in as well with no issues so it's definitely a reliable platform and generally more reliable than i've seen with traditional ARs because all of that tuning and all of those adjustments are rather frustrating because you will have bobbles with a traditional AR and what you're left to do if you don't have an adjustable gas block is start swapping out buffers, buffer springs, different things like that. So this is if you have a bobble you just click it over or click it higher or lower and then you're kind of back in and once you get your loads figured out it's really easy to understand what's going on. So I love that about the jackals with the 300 blackout upper assemblies. Moving along to the rail system, it's done incredibly nice. It's got those M-Lock slots on the side. We will be tricking this out with different IR lasers, lights, and a few other things for nighttime shooting with the quiet device on the end. There's a monolithic pick rail at the top, again, allowing you to put pressure switches, different lights, lasers, uh, aiming modules, and optics on the top. So I love that about it. I also love that shell deflector works fairly well. No issues there. And then that side charging, non-reciprocating charging handle was really awesome. So this is not going to go back and forth. You can kind of wrap your thumb over the top. One thing to consider, though, when running this suppressed, you do not get a ton of gas back in your face, which is absolutely awesome. And that's one I really want to stress on this upper assembly. Again, they've designed it incredibly well. But since it's not dumping gas back here at your face, it is dumping gas out here at your hand. And your hand will turn black if you're not wearing gloves because of some of that over gas in the front kind of dissipating it here rather than back in your face. It's not hot. It's no discomfort. It's just at the end of the day, after shooting about 350 rounds suppressed, my hand was really black from a lot of that carbon buildup at the front of the gun. I recommend that you start adding different um, vertical angled or hand stops, maybe some M-lock covers. I will be doing that and testing it out, but something to consider. I mean, the gas has to go somewhere so it's just diverted up at the front, and I'd much rather have that than at the back. And again, I want to stress that it's diffuse enough where it's not hot and it doesn't cause discomfort on your hand. Just something to consider. You may want to wear gloves if you're not going to cover up some of these ports with grips and things. I will be, so not that big of a deal. So in a nutshell, it was incredibly reliable. It worked out great. It fit on any of those Jackal lowers and pretty much any mil-spec lower assembly with the correct adapter kits from PSA. It ran really good with a wide variety of ammo, a lot better than other ARs chambered at 300 blackout that I've done in the past. It's also incredibly modular in the fact that you can swap out different upper assemblies as well as different stock configurations, which works out great. And another nice touch is they have labeled it 300 blackout on the back so you know what you're shooting. You don't have to worry about kind of mixing and matching and getting confused. This is a great option a great piston system driven gun that doesn't break the bank again a lot of the complete guns are right around a thousand and some of the upper assemblies are right around 649 with free shipping but the best options are going to be over on my campsite page so definitely check it out subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so and follow me on those other platforms the instagram the newly formed twitter and the patreon page as well as the youtube comment section is going to get you some really good deals